Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about smoothing. Now, a word of warning. Smoothing is not the kind of thing that you're going to want to be using a lot if you're making models for a video game. Exactly right. But at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it gets demonstrated so that you can at least take advantage of it for any other projects you might be using inside of Maya. So let's take a look at smoothing just in general. First thing that you'll notice I've got is I've already got a cube into my scene. I've added some subdivisions to it just so that uh, smoothing can have a more interesting effect. Okay. And then under polygons, I'm just going to select smooth. Whoa! And immediately you can see the result. We have, in effect, smoothed our object. It does look smoother. Absolutely. So let's take a look at some of the inputs of this, which are also available if you go under polygons and choose the settings. You'll have access to all of these as well. So let's go ahead and just adjust them in here, and we can see how they change in real time. The first thing that popped up is, look how many more faces are added onto that. Absolutely, which is why you don't, re you don't really want to be using this a lot when making game models. Because you take the amount of detail in your object, and you just increase it exponentially. Speaking of which, there are two methods for smoothing. One is exponential, the other is linear. For starters, I'm going to talk about exponential and some of the uh, settings involved with it, and then we'll go on and talk about linear smoothing as well. Okay. So, with exponential smoothing, we have access to continuity, divisions, smooth UVs, keep borders, keep selection borders, keep hard edges, keep map borders, and keep tessellation. Okay. So uh, that's a mouthful. Dude. Exactly. But everything from here down is going to be just for linear smoothing. So, ah. let's go ahead and talk about this. First of all, continuity. This is going to be the degree of smoothing. This has a value between 1 and 0. By default, this is at 1. As I use my virtual slider to drag this back towards 0, you'll notice we lose smoothing. So I've all that detail, but we're losing the smoothing. Exactly. So, I mean, you could use this to kind of customize how much you're smoothing in certain areas and whatnot. Now, divisions. This is going to be the number of times that the smoothing operation is actually occurring. Right now it's set to 2, so we have a lot of faces being generated. If I were to set this back to 1, for example, ah. you'll notice that we have far fewer faces. We only have 96 faces on the whole model now, Right. which, uh, in effect, does make our object look a bit more rough. It's not quite as uh, smooth or perhaps pleasing to the eye, you might say, but uh, it would be a lot lighter on a game engine oh, very much than so. if we had our division set to 2, because here we have 384 faces, and we haven't even triangulated this yet. <laughs> Dude, so that I mean, will, like, double it. Yeah, and that's going to make it, what is it, 768. I think. I, I don't have that many fingers. Okay, me either. Uh, I, I use some of your toes. Ooh. Okay, so uh, down from here, we have smooth UVs, which is just going to take the UV or texture coordinates for this object and smooth them the same way the vertices have been smoothed as well. This is on by default. Keep border. Now, this is sort of an interesting setting. Let me go ahead and jump back in here, and I'll undo my smooth. I'm going to select the faces of this box and just delete the lower faces so that we do have a border here at the bottom. Right. And let's... Add our smooth back on. It looks like a little helmet. Yeah, I know. Isn't that cool? So let's go ahead and just select our object. We'll open up our smooth inputs again. And right now, keep border is set to on. And if you look, the border of our object hasn't been smoothed at all. It no, hasn't it's moved. Not. So if I switch this to off so we're no longer keeping the border, it gets smoothed out as well, and it's now ah, rounded. Nice. So very cool. Just something for you to uh, take note of. So let's undo that. Let's get back to our object. We also have s keep selection borders. So let me go ahead and just grab, say, the top vertice. Oh, I'm sorry, the top faces of this model, and I'll rerun my smooth operation. And down here we have keep selection border, which is set to on. And you'll notice the border of our selection has not been smoothed right now. As soon as I switch this to off and press enter, or zero for off, you'll notice we now have smoothing along this selection border, which does affect the rest of our model. So be it aware does. of that. Uh, down from here, we have uh, keep map borders set to none, internal, or all. This has to do with texturing. We're not gonna really going to be touching on that right now. We also have the ability to keep hard edges. Now, I'm not going to be talking about normals in this particular lesson. That's going to be uh, for later uh, on. a little bit later on. But if you were to come through and adjust any of the normals of your model to get a hard edge in one place or another, you can, as long as you're using exponential smoothing, you can keep those hard edges. They won't be removed when you smooth. That, that is cool. Well, it does come in very handy because, I mean, if you uh, have spent a long time setting up your hard edges and then you want to add a little bit of smoothing, it would be a shame to lose all that work. Yes, very true. So then we have keep tessellation, which essentially, if we go back and uh, start adjusting the uh, history node of our smooth, it will keep the tessellation from recalculating each time. Uh, this is off by default. So... Uh, 
let's go down and take a look at linear smoothing. Whoa. And this is going to give you very different results. In fact, let me undo and get all the way back to our original object. And let's just run linear smoothing on the entire object. All right. So go ahead and come in here and let's switch this over to linear. And for now, I'm going to set the push strength to zero, and I'll talk about that here in just a second. Now, linear smoothing, on the other hand, aside from uh, exponential, is going to give us greater control over the number of faces created in our smoothed object. So let's take a look at this. First, we have subdivision levels. Now, just like divisions up above, this is going to be the number of times that the smooth operation is actually occurring. So if I were to set this to, say, 2, right now you'll notice I have 216 faces. If I set, uh, set subdivision level to 2, press Enter, wow. I now have 1,944 faces. So that's, that's a lot of work for exactly. a smooth cube. Exactly. It's very much uh, increased our subdivisions very heavily. So let's undo that. Down from here, we have divisions per edge. This is where Maya will actually go in and take the edges of our model and add divisions to it. So if I set this up to maybe 3... What I'm doing here is adding to our smoothing, but in lower increments. It's it's moving up a lot more slowly than if I were to take the subdivision level and just crank yeah, it. Yeah, no kidding. And look at the face counts. Exactly. So it's only 384, or I can't really say only, but it's not as high as 1,900. Yeah, no kidding. So I set this to 4, and it jumps up to 600, and so on and so forth. So it's just sort of, it's kind of a way to fine-tune your smoothing. So you're adding your detail very slowly. Down from here, we have push uh, strength, which is going to control the overall volume of our final smoothed object. Right now, it's set to zero. As I set this up, we start to kind of push away. If I, set, if I were to set this to, say, negative one, we kind of start to collapse in on ourselves. So let's set this to, say, positive one. We also have roundness. And what roundness is going to do is scale the vertices of our uh, smooth surface away from the centers of the original faces of our object. Cool. So we would ha we had a face here, a face here, a face here, and the vertices are being scaled away from those. So if I were to set this up to, say, 3 or 5 or even 10, we start to get this really uh, sort of pillow effect yeah, it's, it's from, uh, from those faces. So that's about as far as I want to take the actual smooth command. So let me go ahead and delete that out. And now let's talk about smooth proxy. I love this. I mean, again, for video games, I, I don't think so. Yeah, Most if, likely not. Yeah, I don't know if I would use it for games, but if you are going to be making a smooth model, smooth proxy is probably definitely the way to go. Because uh, when you select smooth proxy, first of all, some interesting things happen. First of all, you get a couple of layers by default. You get a layer for your proxy mesh and a layer for your smooth mesh. Now, if you're wondering which of the objects is which, let's go ahead and hide the smooth mesh and see it disappear, and we can hide the proxy mesh. Now, our proxy mesh, or as you can see, our original object, mm -hmm. is here, and it's transparent, so we can see through to the smooth object. We can take the smooth object, and here we have our poly smooth face settings. Mm -hmm. So we can, uh, just like uh, our smooth settings we covered a second ago, we can take our divisions and set it up to two to get a, a more rounded object. Nice. But here's how this works. The proxy mesh and the smooth mesh are connected to each other. So that as we change the proxy mesh, the smooth mesh will update in real time. It would be as if we were to take the proxy mesh and model it into something, and when we were done, hit smooth. Smooth, yeah. So let's go ahead and right click and I'll select a single face on the proxy mesh. And let's go ahead and uh, move around and I'll pull this out. And you can see the smooth okay, mesh inside updating. But I can go a bit further and I can actually start using my polygon modeling tools. For example, I could extrude and maybe scale down my extrusion and then extrude again. That's so cool to, uh, to see the actual update from smooth to, to a low res. Is that what you call it? Well, you could. You could call uh, like the proxy mesh a low res model and the smooth mesh a high res right. if you wanted to. So you can see just by modeling out my proxy, uh, my proxy mesh, you can see my smooth mesh instantly updating in within. So it's a very cool way to model out an object and see what it's going to look like smooth at the very end. Instant feedback. Exactly. So very cool. Again, maybe not something I would use if I were making video game models, but cool to know nonetheless. So let's go ahead and undo to get rid of that. And I'll just bring in a single cube. And now let's talk about average vertices. And okay. actually, to make this work better off, let's just go ahead and kill the cube entirely. I'm going to create a plane. And I'm going to increase its size. So we'll take width and height and increase them. And I'm also going to take these subdivisions in each direction and Close just increase up. this up. Now, this is just for example purposes. 
What average vertices actually does is this takes the location of all of the vertices of a model and takes an average of their positions and relocates them. So in effect, and then you get all of that to say this, in layman's terms, it will smooth your object out without adding any more detail to it. That That's nice. It can be. It's, you know, it's not like the most beautiful smoothing you've ever seen, but it can come in very handy. So let's say I grab some faces on this guy, just sort of at random, and drag them way up into the air, and then maybe I'll come in here and grab a few different faces this time, and drag these up a little less. So I've got this really strange sort of look. Now I can come in here and select vertices on my model. So I'll press F9 to select vertices. I can grab individual vertices, so I said I could grab just these guys, but in this case I'm going to grab all the vertices of the entire model. Okay. And under polygons, we're going to select average vertices. And boom, you'll notice a little bit of smoothing taking place, yeah. but no faces, no edges, no vertices have been added. The only thing that's happened is the location of these vertices has all been averaged out. And if you want to, you can hit G to repeat this command over and over until it you get something that's tree. yeah, until you get something that's smoothed out to the level you're looking for. And don't be surprised if this has the effect. Like if you use this on an entire model, nine times out of ten, this will have the effect of shrinking, shrinking down your model. And melting. Yeah. So, be very careful with this. But uh, it is a nice way to add a level of smoothing. Like as you can see here, we have an object which has indeed been smoothed. Now it looks like a very lumpy smoothed out surface, but it has no more detail than it had Yeah, before. no kidding. And so that in itself is nice. Exactly. So that can come in very handy. So really, with that, we've covered everything I wanted to talk about for smoothing. I mean, we talked about uh, just standard smoothing. We discussed smooth proxy, uh, which is basically, I mean, it's, it's just exactly like smoothing, but it gives you real-time feedback. And it allows you, if you want to, I mean, like you go into your layers and you could hide that smooth uh, model if you wanted to, because that might speed up your viewport. I mean, it's very powerful. And then if you're working on a game model and maybe you need to kind of smooth things out because you don't want to add any more detail, you can, of course, just average out the vertices. Right. So really, that's going to about wrap it up for this lesson. So thanks a lot, everyone.